What is the shop that when you see it on the shot list, you kind of think to yourself, please, <laughs> there must be another way to do this. Certainly crane shots are really difficult. Car shots are really difficult. Any kind of uh, handoff where you have one, the camera going from one operator to another is always challenging. And pretty much any kind of complex blocking where a lot of people need to follow the exact timing at the exact same time, it needs to be repeated multiple times in order to make it work properly. But for my money, the most difficult shot that's most commonly used is the circle dolly shot, sometimes called the circle strafe. It is where the camera moves around a subject in a circle while counterpanning so that the subject stays central in the frame and the background whizzes past behind it. Michael Bay loves to use this shot, usually compounded with the movement of the subject or moving from high to low. And there really is no better way to show internal turmoil of your character than having them stand still and the whole world flash around behind them. But it's not just for fancy moves that the uh, circle strafe is useful. It's also essential for getting those slow crawls around a character and making a otherwise boring shot much more visually interesting, much more dynamic, and much more psychological. It sort of shows the character thinking. This is often used in phone conversations because you can circle Dolly around to reveal the person who's talking, or you can circle Dolly around to uh, make the shot seem like the is coming to a decision as it slowly glides around. Now, if you do a 360 circle dolly at this sort of speed, you're looking at two or three minutes. So you're able to take two minutes of otherwise super boring uh, exposition and turn it into something that is actually really interesting to watch. David Fincher, who doesn't really like handheld camera work or Steadicam for that matter, uses this uh, technique a lot to show the slow wheels of fate grind to their inevitable conclusion. Sometimes it's used as part of a conversation shot where the camera just happens to arrive at each character as they have their line. The reason that it is difficult to do is because you need to do several movements at the same time and have them perfectly imbalanced. You need to move in a circle around your subject while panning the camera uh, at the exact same rate so that the person stays stable. This is really hard to do handheld because it means you have to kind of crab walk sideways as well as move your uh, body around it. It's very difficult not to get closer or further from the person and then have to have the focus puller or the camera operator slowly adjust, which uh, over time is really difficult to do. You see short versions of this uh, with the gimbal, which is really possible. I did one on the 80s thriller Death Mask trailer, but it was really only a couple of seconds and I was able to use autofocus. To do this consistently, you either need a dolly on a circular track or you need something like I used for this shot, which is a proper doorway dolly with either um, a tripod on it, or if you can, use a central tower called a bazooka uh, to mount the camera on so that it is part of the dolly and will move as smoothly as the dolly moves. To get that beautiful, slow, weighty movement, you'll need to do what Francis Ford Coppola does, which is put 200 pounds of sandbags on top of the dolly or you can get a dolly like this one with a seat on it, which allows the operator to sit on the dolly as it's being pushed and add that 100 plus pounds of weight uh, just with the operator. It's much, much easier than loading and unloading sandbags. The weight really plays a role because the more weight the dolly has, the more inertia it has, and the smoother your movements will be both starting and stopping, and also the smoother the camera will be because the camera isn't as affected uh, by small imperfections in the surface. If you wanna go the extra mile, you actually lay down uh, boards of either cardboard, which is the cheap version, or you can get masonite from a hardware store and put it down as a track. Uh, this works especially good outside if you're dealing with a rough surface, but even uh, old floorboards like I have in my studio do affect the camera somewhat. So it's great to get a perfectly smooth surface and even let a little bit of air out of the tires. That makes it harder to push the dolly, but smooths the shot out even more. A couple of things I learned shooting this video was that you need to get the dolly up to speed and moving before you say action. Otherwise the first couple of moments of the shot will be the uh, slightly unsteadiness as the uh, dolly grip takes up the weight of the dolly and starts to push into it and gets up to the speed that you want. You might be thinking that a doorway dolly is a very expensive solution to a problem that could be solved by smaller slider or maybe a gimbal, but this is a really fantastic dolly 
regardless of price, but the base version is only $1,300. Now you can get a lot more accessories like the seat, uh, like the sideboards. This one came with uh, track options as well. So I can swap the wheels out uh, for something that runs on speed rail in order to be able to use it outside and not just on smooth, smooth surfaces like the floor. I thought there was gonna be much more of a learning curve uh, with this dolly, but it really does work pretty well straight out of the box. It's actually much easier to use um, than a slider because it carries you, the operator, with it as it moves. So uh, the relation between you and the camera stays the same and you're able to have uh, much more control over your pan and tilt than you would be uh, using a slider. With dollies like this one, you sort of have to split the difference between having a lot of weight uh, so that the dolly is smooth and this whole thing is uh, steel and having something that's small enough to get in and out of a truck to be able to take it apart to transport it in case you're not always working in the same place. It's definitely a two-person job, but then again, using the dolly is a two-person job anyway. I can get this thing in the back of my uh, Subaru Outback pretty easily. So you're really only limited by uh, the surface that you're on or the length of the speed rail that you can carry. The big advantage for me of using this on a flat surface is that you're able to work with whatever um, tilt and direction that you want by swiveling the wheels. Uh, when it's on rails, it's the shape and size and length of the rails that limits how far and where the dolly can move. Having said that, if you're working on a set uh, where you're gonna be shooting a lot, so you're shooting a project in a contained space like uh, I was with some of the scenes of Devil's Fortune, it maybe takes 40 minutes to get the dolly set up and build uh, on top of the time that you're using for your camera, um, but it adds so much more versatility to your camera movement for the entire day or the, the time you're there. You're able to do slow push-ins, which is another really great way of adding emotion with camera movement. You're able to smoothly dolly with your talent as they move from place to place in the room. And you can do much more complex blocking by having a camera operator just sit with the camera on their shoulder in the seat, having the dolly grip push them around and then at certain points have them step off the dolly and go handheld. This is the technique that they've used to get a lot of amazing one takes uh, like the famous single take in Touch of Evil. That is my look at the circle strafe, the hardest move in cinematography in my opinion, and how with the right equipment you can actually do it pretty easily and consistently. Check out Canon Masterclass for more in-depth tutorials and filmmaking tips. I'm gonna to link to all the gear I used in the description of this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Oh,